I speak to you in the name of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. As a layperson, it's a privilege to stand before you and to try to offer a few reflections on the mystery of the Eucharist. Year after year, we gather to enter and relive the final events in the life of Christ. And they are so profound that we may never exhaust their meanings. The Last Supper, the washing of the feet, the commandment to love one another. These stories are a hearth where we'll gather for warmth and light until the end of time. Yet there's much that we don't yet understand. We're like photographers with an excellent camera lens, only one that's not quite wide enough to take in the whole picture. We may never see it all. On Maundy Thursday, we celebrate gifts that the mind can hardly grasp. For one, there's the Eucharist. Then there's the example of the servant king washing his disciples' feet. The stories offer beauty and wisdom, and yet they are quite unsettling. If you've ever taken part in a foot washing, I think you'll know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to try and unpack that unsettled feeling. I think that we enter into these rituals to become unsettled, to let these stories sift down into the soil of our lives, where they sow the seeds of new growth and understanding. Yet at the Last Supper, words were spoken that have turned history on its head. This is my body. The idea is unnerving, fraught with both love and power. What are we to make of it in the 21st century? I'd like to explore how the Eucharist might speak to us today. For a few minutes, let's venture into the vastness of God's creation. Let's try out that wide-angle lens, turn it on the world, and see what we haven't yet seen. At this moment in history, we've begun to see our connection to creation in a new light. For example, we speak of Christ coming to save humankind. Yet we've also come to see that we're not the sole recipients of God's loving care. Plants, animals, planets, galaxies, Creation itself is the first revelation of God's love for us. In the 21st century, this is my body, speaks to God's presence in the sacred cosmos which enfolds us. This is holy communion on a grand scale. Our wide-angle lens shows us that eons ago, the universe began with what we call the Big Bang. That's a kind of clunky expression. You can also call it the great flaring forth. That term was coined by the late Thomas Berry, a Catholic priest and cultural historian. And along with scientist Brian Swim, he helped shape a new story of evolution and the emergence of life. Berry didn't make scientific discoveries. Instead, he perceived their meaning through his faith in God's boundless creativity and love for all that God had made. So he points to the earliest moments of the universe when stars exploded into life, generating particles that evolved over time into planets, solar systems, galaxies, into a universe of great complexity and beauty that continues to evolve today. If you've heard it said that we come from stardust, it sounds cutesy, but in fact it's true. Our universe is dynamic and alive. Every creature on Earth evolved out of that first magnificent act of creation that began at the origins of time. In this universe story, God has fashioned unique living things with the power to direct their own development and to live in relationship to all others. Our capacity for connection and communion is at the heart 
of reality. Which brings us to Maundy Thursday and to bread and wine and the words of institution. This is my body. This is my blood. Everyone who has ever lived or who will live, including Jesus, and everything that has ever been or will be, including bread and wine, is formed of matter that evolved from that first dramatic moment of creation. With our wide-angle lens, we might consider that when Jesus entered history as a material being, he gave a sacred dignity to the entire cosmos. His bodily presence made all creation holy. This is my body. What powerful words with so many levels of meaning which continue to unfold through time. The Eucharist is a cosmic sacrament, a gift which embraces not only the bread which we receive, but also our fellow human beings and the whole of creation. Perhaps creation itself is a sacrament, the outward sign of God's love for us, just as bread and wine are a sign of God's universal and never-ending presence. During Holy Week, we gather to reflect upon the Paschal mystery of Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection. We speak of the bread as Christ's body, broken and shared, and the wine as blood poured out for us, but also with us, because God who took human form shares our sufferings and that of all living creatures as they die and give birth. We don't understand the Paschal mystery, but we have all touched death and resurrection in our own lives and in the life of the world. The Paschal mystery is at the very heart of life. We gather tonight to embrace it in ritual, to touch both its darkness and extraordinary light. We pray that Christ will bless and heal this suffering world. We pray that we will receive his love, revealed to us through the gift of the Eucharist and the boundless life of creation. We pray to be open to the blessings which we celebrate, that we may share these blessings as we break bread together. Amen.